What is up, you guys? And thank you for joining for another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, the Skyrender. And today I got myself a match against Caddy Cool. I don't know, it's just Caddy. And this is a very, very good battler. He has a channel on his own, so I'm going to link that down below. A uh, quick look at his team. He's definitely using a very, very good team with both Torkoal, Driftblim, uh, Pangora, as I do, Wiggletuff, Cradley, and uh, Plusle. I'm myself using my a new team that I've been building on, and um, basically nothing new on it. It's the same set. And Dust Dog's still struggling to work, and uh, he might get an honest chance this battle. And uh, to be honest here, this was, of course, a very, very good battle on both sides. We really both tried to uh, predict one another, and as a result, it became a very close game. And the uh, biggest threat on his team, well, Pangoro is tough. Uh, Driftblim, I know is tough, because I know somewhat about his set. Uh, Wigglytuff can be tough if, um, if I don't expect what kind of set it is. And the Torkoal, it's actually really, really bulky. So I do fear it in many, many ways. Uh, I myself using a Molly with the Choice Band, um, and Pangora, which is Scarf, the Malamar, um, oh, what's it called? Go Goat, and the Beard Fist. So I'm gonna start off with my Mole guy. He's gonna start off with his Plusle, and uh, from the look of it, it seems like a safest bet. So it's a battle against the rats to begin with. But anyway, let's actually get into it. So yeah, like I said there, he's gonna start with his Plusle, I'm gonna start with my Emolga, and... Uh, well, really, it seems like the safest best for both of us, and it really comes to show here. So his name is HV, HIV positive, that's awesome. So anyway, I'll go for a U-turn here, and I do a lot of damage on this thing. I don't bring it down to the Sash with the thought it was going for. So I'm gonna go into my Groot, or Grout, or whatever it's called, really. He's gonna go for a Nostal Blot, I know I can wall off whatever his thing is bringing, even as Hidden Power, Ice, of course. Let's go for a Volt Switch, and yeah, fair damage, sure. Uh, I easily walled it out, and um, yeah, he's gonna go with Storkoal. I really don't want to risk staying in here, I don't appreciate the Lava Plume, even though I am specially defensive. So, I'll actually decide to switch out and go into my Bed Fist, if I'm wearing correctly. And if you guys know, this is a special set, Bed Fist. Uh, the physical set is the black one, um, and of course the white one is a special set. And he goes for a Jawn, and I really, really don't want to be put to sleep. So in that regard, I am forced to switch out. And I'm gonna switch into my Dust Dogs, because I was thinking about it that even if you go for a special offensive damage, he'll still don't do too much, because I am special defensive. He's go for his HIV positive. And really here, I don't know why I stayed in. I went for a Quiver Dance because I knew he was gonna die. But really, that Thunderbolt did way more than I thought it would. Uh, of course, with Life Hope and stuff like that, it really was boosted up. But that was way over my comfort zone. And he will show that he's Scarf too. And how Scarf? Yoli Scarf. So that means that his Pangoro is able to outspeed my Pangoro. So Dust Dogs did his usual work, be in the happy sack and just die. I'm gonna bring my Pangoro, threatening him out with a storm through. So he goes to his Torkoal, and uh, I won't do too much damage really, since it is super effective, or not super effective, but does a critical hit. Uh, I do expect him not to go for Lava Plume, but try to stay in. So I'm just going for another Storm Throw. I know I can't take it out, but then again, I know that he won't sack it. So I'm actually going to switch, switch out now, of course, because I know he's not going to sack it, like I said there. So I'm going to bring Bed Fist, hope for him to go for Jar Ball, even Lava Plume, I can probably take that. And uh, with that in mind, I, like I said, I knew he was going to switch out, so it brings 80 days. And 80 days can't, of course, do anything here, and uh, I also took this opportunity to set up a Cotton Guard, uh, in case he decides to switch out, and I really thought it was a golden opportunity for me to go for a surf. And of course, he was thinking that, you know, I would be in the obvious physical Wally set, but no, I'm a fast special sweeper. And, um, yeah. <laughs> really cheap hit, really. So, anyway, Wigglesuff is here. I was actually thinking to set up Echo Voice because I am somewhat bulky. Um, not too much. This Hyper Voice did like 40% here. And I really didn't feel comfortable here, so I was switching to my Groot, even though it has an honest chance of taking a flamethrower if that's the worst case, but seeing the spec at the time, it is not. It just is very strong, and it gets a crit here, and that is very, very unfortunate. I do outspeed though, so I go for a milk drink, thinking I can have an honest chance to set up, right? Right? No. It can burn. It's 10%, but it can burn. And now my all my physical offensive pressure is gone. It's generally gone at this point. And I'm just gonna do some ship damage here. 
and of course Horn Leech is doing nothing, but to consider each of uh, the wheel of HP, I actually have an honest chance of recovering here. And actually, Dazzling Gleam did, did not do too much, even Hyper Voice won't do too much, it's only the Flamethrower that does hit well, and uh, really, I think Caddy here was thinking that I was in a range where he could take me out, but I do get a score a crit there, which means that with the bird intact, I'll actually be able to survive. And I'm actually right now in a range where I can just set up a milk drink here and actually finish him off. I, he is actually doing less damage than I do to him. So he takes this opportunity to switch into his uh, Rift Blim here. So, and I was very, very sure he was going to go for Phantom Force here, because like I said, I know his set. Sadly, I should say. Uh, so I know it's Power Herb, Phantom Force set, which means that he will activate his Unburden. And the items activates anyway after he's used his move. So, and that's what, what, it was, what it was going for, to be able to outspeed my Molga. So it was a very, very good choice of it. So it goes for Acrobatics, and it does roughly 70 here. So I had in mind that he's gonna do 70 damage. I need to take that up again, and then go for another Dark Pulse. So I'm actually gonna switch out here, and uh, actually second off Groot, because I don't have any real specific uses of this guy anymore, because it is Burn, of course. And really, I think my Malamar can probably finish this game off if I can be able to take care of this Rift Blim. Of course, it goes for the Phantom Force, and really here, I should have stayed in and taken that move. But I really didn't want to risk it. I wanted Bed Fist to become in a range of HP where I actually could take it out. So let's go for the for Phantom Force, and I still don't get enough HP to survive another Phantom Force. So I'm gonna expect him to go for an Acrobatics here, and that is exactly what to do with roughly half damage. But the thing is, if he does go for the, um, the acrobatics again, it won't kill me. I find it for it means I could actually survive it. So anyway, I do get to burn here and I go for a wild charge. And uh, if I didn't score a crit here, I actually wouldn't have taken him out. Because the max damage I could have done here was around 65%. So it was 60-65%. So the crit here matters so much. Because it is so decisive, because that means that the biggest threatening poke on his team is gone. So he's gonna bring the black eyes here, and really, there is nothing I need to worry about anymore. The Stormfrog is coming, I know Imog of course can't say that, and <laughs> that's just very very real. But, I'm gonna bring in Seratul here. Seratul is not defensive at all to be honest, but it can actually take Stormfrog rather well. I gotta go for his superpower, be it even more bulkier, he do will break through of course with crit. But, the thing is that even though he tried to stop me here, my Malamar is in the range where he can actually outspeed both the Wigglytuff and the Cradle Lee. And of course in combination with, uh, with the superpower boost that I get here, I'll actually be able to finish this game off really really nicely. And it's like I said, had I not scored a crit with the Molga, I would have been in a much, much different situation than I would have lost. Because even if I were able to take out his Drift Blim, I still would have sacked off Malamar's defensive bolt that he got to that point. He will lose a lot of HP on Acrobatics. And the Pangoro, with the amount of the HP it did, would actually have been able to finish him off. And I had no coke to outspeed it, because I'm an adamant Pangoro while he is a jolly one. Which meant that his Pangoro could just have cleaned the game. And I think having that in mind really, really made that critical hit very, very decisive there in the end. So yeah, Cat actually really pulled a very, very good game, and I really feel that the game decided for us who was going to reign supreme, to be honest. Because like I said there, the situation would have been very easily that I would have lost in the end there if things had happened the way they did. So I'm actually going to repeat that again so you guys see how decisive that was. Like I said there, he would have been in a range where he would have survived with... Uh, Maybe 2%. Uh, I would kill him in max damage, but it's not often you get that type of max damage, so it's generally frustrating that it went down like that, and I think that was makes it such a good thing, really. But I'm really glad to see Emolga pulling through. It would actually. Emolga, you know, the choice bandit set, it really puts people off guard, of course, because they're in expecting it to be the obvious set, which is a special set with air slash and stuff like that, so. It really has been doing numbers for me, and I love it for that. It makes it seem very, very much alive. And of course, especially that Beard Fist take people off guard. Uh, and Caddy's team, I liked it. I like this Drift Limb, I really do. I hope to see it m one more time here. Um, and with that said, guys, you know, thank you guys all for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. 
And the sky's limits. Have a good day, alright? Take care. Bye.